Today I'm going to show you how to homebrew your old or new 3DS for free. This is on the latest firmware 11.17 and will work on any model of the 3DS or 2DS family. This guide will add custom firmware which allows you to play any game you want, add custom themes, plus so much more. You can even revive online services with Pretendo. So starting off with what you need, you obviously need your console. This can be any model, 2DS, 3DS, old or new, however, if you do have a new model like I do right here there is an easier more straightforward method called super skater hacks I will have a link to that video down below but if you want to or if that method becomes out of date you can always follow this one as well next up you'll need an SD card you certainly can use the two or four gigabyte card that came with your console but I would recommend upgrading to a larger one like this 32 gigabyte sand disk that I will be using that way you'll have tons of room to add games later on just just make sure the small plastic tab here is pushed up otherwise you will run into issues. You can even use a micro SD card with an adapter instead of a regular sized one and if your 3DS needs a micro SD card use that instead of course. You will need to connect this to your computer so if your PC doesn't have an SD slot you can use an SD to USB adapter like my Ugreen one to do so. Everything I will be using is linked in the description if you want to get it for yourself. I will be doing this with a Windows computer but you can also use a Mac or Linux as well. There will just be a couple different steps. All right, and to get started, I have a link down below for this Google Doc page where you have everything you need, including a disclaimer. Basically, you always have a chance to brick your device, so make sure you follow all the steps correctly the first time. If you have to watch the video through once to understand it before doing it yourself, then that's something you should do. Because it's a video guide, make sure to read the description and go through the comments to make sure this method is still up to date. And of course, Nintendo, there will be no mention or instructions on obtaining software illegally in this video. Please leave me alone. <laughs> now before getting started, we need to make sure that we do not already have custom firmware already installed. This could be the case if you got it used off of eBay, but to do this, hold select and power on your console. Keep holding select and I have the home menu. That means my console is not modded. If you got any other screens like the Luma configuration screen, your console is already modded and you will have different steps to follow because you don't actually have to do the exploit. So click on the already have CFW on the dock and go from there. So now that we know our device is not modded, we are ready to go forward with the guide. The first step is to format our SD card to FAT32. So if you're using your existing SD card that came with your console, plug that into your computer. And if you do not have one, just plug in your new SD card. So I have my SD card plugged in and the first thing we need to take notice of is the drive letter. As you can see, mine is drive G. It says USB drive because it is an SD to USB adapter, but I'm going to go inside and here is my existing one. You will also have a Nintendo 3DS folder. You could also have a DCIM, but if you do not want to lose anything that you currently have on there, we're going to highlight everything inside, copy it, and then place it in a safe spot. So I'll just do it quickly on my desktop. The reason we're doing that is because formatting your SD card will wipe everything. And now we are good to format it. So if your SD card is 32 gigabytes or lower, we can format it through Windows. So in the left side of the file explorer, click on your drive letter. Remember, it's very important you choose the right one. Right click, go to properties. As you can see, mine is FAT32, but I'll show you how to do it anyways. So if we right click again, we'll have the option to format. Make sure it is on FAT32 at 32 kilobytes and press start and remember this will wipe everything so please be sure you know which drive letter your SD card is in but once you're sure it'll give you a warning press ok and format complete so if you have a SD card that is 64 gigabytes or larger anything larger than 128 isn't really recommended for the 3ds anyway but if you have 64 or 128 you need to do it a different way so on the dock i have a link here for ridgecorp it is a fat32 formatting program it will take you here and you'll just have to download it click the image to download the giu format and because mine is already fat32 i will put in some footage here make sure you have the proper drive letter selected and 
32,000 allocation unit size. If you get issues, make sure all your windows are closed when you format it. But once you have it formatted as FAT32, we are good to place our Nintendo 3DS folder back on and any other folders that you had, and we are ready to proceed with the guide. So let's go back to the Google Doc. And for this guide, we're gonna be following the official written guide. So on this link right here, click on it. It'll take us to 3ds.hacks.guide. And while we're here, there are some great resources, including the official Nintendo Homebrew Discord server if you do run into issues. And there's also an option to show your support by donating to their guide. And we can get started with our download. Scroll down to what you need. The first thing we're gonna grab is the latest release of MSET 9. So click on that. And we're gonna simply click here to download MSET 9 V2. It will download, exit that page, and we will need Python as well. But if you are on Linux or Mac, you may already have it. So just open up your terminal window and enter Python 3 minus V as you can see on the screen here. But if you don't have it, just click on the Python link here. It'll take us to the Python page, click download Python. We got our exe file, we can exit there. And that is all we need for now. So scroll farther down and remember all the steps I do in the video will be based off of this guide. So I encourage you to follow along on there so we can minimize this for now. And now I have my SD card on the right and my downloads on the left. We are gonna open up MSET 9 zip file so you will need an extraction software like WinRAR or 7-zip, but open it up, go inside of the first folder and we're gonna highlight everything here and drag it onto the root of our SD card. Perfect, we can exit there and delete it off of our computer. We don't need the zip file anymore. And now if you haven't installed Python, we're gonna do that now by running the exe file. So run through these windows. I'm just gonna upgrade my current version, but run through the setup process and make sure it is installed to your computer. Okay, we're good, I'll close that. Don't need the exe file anymore. So now that we have Python installed, we're ready for the next step. And now we are going to run the MSET 9 script. Now this is where it is different for Windows, Mac, and Linux. If you're on Mac, you're gonna be running the Mac OS command. If you're on Linux, you're gonna be opening up a terminal window, CD to the root of your SD card, and then type in python3 mset.py, just as it says in the guide. For Windows, we are going to be running the bat file. So double click the mset9 windows.bat, and it should open up the command window right here. As you can see, there is different options for different versions of consoles, old and new firmware versions as well, but you should be on the latest version 11.17. I do recommend updating before doing this guide, even though it is safe for now to update to 11.17 with custom firmware. So make sure you know the model that you are modding. Mine is an old 3DS on 11.17, so I'm gonna type in one. If you are on the new model, type two. So I'm gonna be typing one for old 3DS, press enter. We're gonna type one and press enter. And after you've read the disclaimer, press one to confirm and enter. And once you see this screen, press enter to exit. And now it's time to eject our SD card and place it into our console. So let's insert our SD card and double check that your tab right here is pushed up power on your console and once it's turned on we're gonna go into the Mii Maker. If you haven't ran the Mii Maker before you will see this screen and that means it created the proper data for our exploit to work otherwise if you have ran it you will see the welcome to the Mii Maker screen and you'll be good to go as well. You already have the data. We are good to go we can press the home button and close it. Next up we're gonna go into system settings go into data management Nintendo 3DS, software, and hit reset. And don't worry, this isn't gonna wipe any of your data. Press okay. And now we can power off our console. Make sure to press that one as well. And now we can take our SD card back out and place it into our computer again. So back on your SD card, we are gonna run that same command, so again, depends on your operating system. I'm on Windows, so I'm gonna be doing the dot .bat. Double click on it. That same command window will open up. Type the same number you did earlier for your console type. Mine was one for old 3DS on 1117. Press enter. Now in my case, it says ready, I am good. If yours says not ready, type two and hit enter and then follow the directions there and then run that script over again. But as long as it says ready, you can press zero, enter, 
goodbye. And now we can eject our SD card again and we're gonna place it back in our console. So once your SD card is back in, power on your device. And without pressing anything, when you turn on your device, system settings should be selected here. If it's not, go over to system settings and once it looks like this, power off your console and then back on so that when you turn it on, it is on system settings. And at this point, we are at part of the guide where it is very important you follow each step correctly. So I do recommend following the written guide and using my guide as a reference. And I also suggest watching it through once before doing it. But now we are good to press A on system settings. We're gonna go to data management, Nintendo 3DS, extra data, and then now we don't press any buttons. And at this point, be very careful not to press any buttons. We are going to remove the SD card on this screen. So carefully remove it. It should give you this screen right here, no SD card found, and it is in my hand. I found it. <laughs> Set your console down, and we're going to place this into our computer while leaving your screen on there. And back on your SD card, we're gonna run the exact same script. There it is, our command window. Type the same number for your console. Mine is one for old 3DS 1117. Press enter. And on this screen, we are going to type three and press enter to inject it. And you should see MSET 9 successfully injected. You can press enter to exit. And now again, we can eject our SD card and place it back in our console but please be sure not to press any other buttons when inserting it. So pick it up carefully and now we're gonna insert it without touching any buttons. And then it should load. And you should see this screen. This is the Safe B9S installer. And if at this point you did get a red screen or a loading screen that you're stuck on, be sure to check out the troubleshooting guide because it could be a couple different reasons. But if you followed all the steps very carefully, you should be on this screen. And on the top screen, it says to enter a key combo. I don't know if, if yours will be the same or not, but just go ahead and do that. Up and then A. You should see this screen, press A to continue. And now is the Luma configuration menu. Now, if you continue your journey in modding after this video, you might need this screen, but we are gonna leave it blank for now. We're not gonna make any changes. And we're gonna hit start to reboot the console, to save and exit. And now we're gonna power off our console fully. And this next step is very, very important. We are gonna be removing the MSET 9 inject. So take the SD card out yet again and place it into your computer. So back on our SD card, we're gonna run that command again. So we'll get this command window back up. Again, press one or whichever number for your console. Press enter and you should see a green injected. That is what we want. And now we are going to type four to remove the trigger file. Press enter, you should see okay. And now we're gonna press five and enter. And now we have removed MSET 9 successfully. Press enter to exit. Now on the actual guide, I hope you were following along. You should be able to scroll down all the way to the bottom to see finalizing setup. Click on that, it should take us to this page where we're gonna get some important things. So here in this blue box is what we are going to install, a couple different homebrew apps and programs that are gonna be very, very useful in the future. But we're gonna scroll down and here is what we need is the xfinalizehelper.firm. Click on that. It will automatically download and secondly finalize.romfs that is also going to directly download so now that we have those we can minimize and with my sd card on the right downloads on the left we are going to grab the finalize.romfs file and drag it onto the root of your sd card press yes if you're prompted we can delete that off of our computer and next up is the finalize helper.firm we're going to open up the luma folder right click and create a new folder called payloads. And we're gonna place our finalize helper firm file in there. Press yes if you're prompted. We can delete this off of our computer and we are ready to eject our SD card again. And you guessed it, back on our 3DS. So insert your SD card, power on your console. And at this point, 
in our system settings. If you are not on 11.17, if you did not update before starting this guide, it is safe to do so now. And you can just update it normally as you would for a 3DS. But I'm on 11.17 and you most likely are as well. So let's move on to the next step. So once you're on the home menu, we are going to press left shoulder, D-pad down and select and that should open our Rosalina menu. If any of your buttons are broken that we used for that combo, check out the guide because there are alternatives. But once you're here, we're gonna go all the way down to miscellaneous options, press A, go down all the way to the bottom, dump DSP firmware, press A, press B once you see this screen, go up one to nullify user time offset, press A, and then press B once, twice, three times to exit the Rosalina menu. And now the next step, we're gonna power off our console and we are gonna turn it back on while holding X. So hold X and power on your console and you should see this screen. It, if you did not boot to that screen and you went to the home menu, double check your spelling on your payloads folder in your Luma folder. And going forward, if you turn on your console holding the start button, it will load into God Mode 9. If you're prompted to create an essential files backup, press A to do so and then press A to continue once it's completed. And if you're prompted to fix the date and time, go ahead and do that and then press A to continue as well. But once you see this screen, press the home button. This is the action menu in God Mode 9. We're gonna go down to scripts, press A, and then press A on finalize. This is a summary of what this script is going to run on your console. It's gonna install those homebrew apps that were in that blue box on the guide. It will remove any unnecessary SD files. And most importantly, it will create your NAND backup. And you do need one gigabyte of free space in order to create that NAND backup. But just press A to continue, press A to unlock your SysNAN writing, and there's a key combo, let's go ahead and do that. Press A, and it will begin. Now this may take a little bit, so I'll meet you when it's done. And it is done. We now have our NAND backup on our SD card, so press A to continue, it will turn off your console. And now we need to transfer that NAND backup to our computer. So. Last time, we are going to take out our SD card and place it in our computer. So on your SD card, we're gonna go into GM9, Backups, and this is our NAND backup. This is very important, so I highly suggest putting it in a safe space. So personally, I'm going to create a folder on my desktop and call it and I'm gonna call it that. Now I have the date in there because you can always do another NAND backup further into the future. It always helps having a recent one. But I'm gonna copy my backups folder inside of there. And then I'm also going to be placing it in my cloud storage. That way I cannot lose it. Bricks are rare, but you never wanna take the chance of it happening and not having your NAND backup. But now that we have it in that folder in a safe spot, we have all three of those. We can go into the backups folder on your SD card and delete the bin file and bin.sha file. The exefs one is so small that it really doesn't matter. It's not taking up any extra space. And now that is it. Next time we go onto our 3DS, it will be fully modded and there will be a few presents. So let's eject our SD card for the last time in this video and head back over there. And once you power it on, you will see new software has been added to the home menu. So press OK and let's check them out. The first one is Anemone. This will allow you to add custom themes, which there are so many. I have a video on that specifically if you are interested, but you can add custom themes to your 3DS. And on that note, I do have a full 3DS homebrew playlist where it has a bunch of different video guides on how to set up and add different homebrew software to your 3DS. So that is linked in the guide or down below in the description if you're interested. Next up, we have Checkpoint, which is a save game manager. This one is extremely important. FBI allows you to install CIA files, which can be anything from homebrew apps to retro games to full 3DS games. We have FTPD, which allows you to access your 3DS SD card wirelessly. The very important homebrew launcher where it holds all of your 3DS homebrew apps. 
And lastly, we have Universal Updater, which, is a, which allows you to download homebrew apps directly on your 3DS along with updating different apps and software. Let's go into the homebrew launcher, and this is how it looks. Right now, we only have Checkpoint as a 3DS app as the other ones are on the home screen. And remember, if you're interested in future modding tutorials, make sure you hit that subscribe and please like the video if you found this video helpful. I hope you have lots of fun on your newly modded 3DS and I will see you on the next one. Stay funky and happy modding. <laughs>